I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and welcome to a very special edition of RPV City Talk. It is special because this <laughs> is our year in review with Mayor Susan Brooks, the mayor of 2018. Congratulations, you did it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Let's do a cheer. Fabulous. It's been an amazing year. It has. And um, your last official meeting as mayor was technically November 7th. And so just as you kind of reflect, how would you sort of size up your year as mayor here? I, I intense. Uh, <laughs> Action-packed, uh, powerful, yes. eventful, um, for the most part fun, mm -hmm. but also serious. Uh, we had some serious things happen, and I think all in all, the city is really doing very well. So moving it along, it's been... I'm really ready to pass the baton, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you were to just sort of rate the state of the city, are you, are you happy with the direction? Oh, my goodness. Our city is the healthiest it has ever been, ever. Ever, I mean, we have uh, we are healthy with regard to our environment. Uh, we're we're receiving all these environmental awards. We're healthy regarding our financial picture. We're fiscally healthy. We're aesthetically healthy. If you look at the medians, you'll see um, our medians mm -hmm. and our beautification programs are working. Um, we also have, we are one of the safest cities mm -hmm. in California. We are the number one city for our streets in the state of California. And soon to be, and as of January, will be um, one of the quietest because our leaf blower ordinance prohibiting gas but not electric blowers will, will be in effect. And I just think, you know, the whole ambiance of sound and beauty and everything around us um, that we work so hard for is really moving forward. Well, congratulations. You, this council accomplished a lot, as did the staff, as did our the volunteer commissions awesome. and committees. Yeah, and the so there's so many things we could, we could talk about from the year, but if you were had to do your top three um, accomplishments for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes in 2018, what, what would you pick? The top three accomplishments? Yeah, for the city. Well, we got the general plan out the door, and that was only took over a decade. And the planning commission was doing seventy, uh, did seventy some odd meetings leading up to it. But we actually did finish the general plan, which was an update of the plan. Which was an update of the plan. But these things move constantly, and then if you don't, most cities will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to experts out in the field who really don't know anything about the city uh, to do such a thing. And well, we did it in-house because we did not want outsiders coming in to tell mm -hmm. us what our city was all about. So we had that. Um, we are right now working really earnestly, and I'm really excited about this, working with the National Park Service. Um, just got a phone call from the acting director about trying to move this forward so we can free up deed restrictions on our civic center site so that we can have emergency services, which we know we need fire services that are adequate. We have that 1,400 acre preserve. That's a and tinder that's box. And that's to put it right here on the site. And that would be area. right here on this site. And we need a sheriff's sub substation as well. So I think we're moving forward in that direction. Uh, we've done a lot of positive activities, um, public safety wise. We're the eighth safest city now in the we even had a crime-free week in September, which was we amazing. Did a crime-free week. Yeah. yeah. So you've listed some things. I don't. Know if I moving on because we're since we're talking about public safety. This council has been incredibly dedicated. We've increased resources. Um, talk about how effective we have been in, in in helping to keep us be as safe as we are. Well, especially right. when we had you know uh, back back a few years back, we were having a lot of issues with burglaries. Et cetera. Right. In 2015, we had this spike up because of those bills that had been passed in our our legislature, which we have a lot of problems with, mm -hmm. um, we're losing local control and we're trying very hard. But we did, um, we did the automatic license plate readers we started and we continue with them. We've got over 45 of them installed throughout the whole peninsula, working with all the cities. We've got the third round of the ring programs went through. And so there are, I think it's 1,400 um, homes now have... Uh, now have the ring system. And for uh, residents that might not know what it the is. The ring doorbell system, yeah. everybody must know. Amazon <laughs> actually bought it. Yep. Uh, the homeowner security program really helps with backup because if there is something, automatic license plate readers, ALPRs, only measure your your license plate. They don't see the faces. So I, I think we have a really aggressive program going on, and it's very effective because crime is down 
um, significantly since 2015. Right, and a lot of the things that you've done is with uh, uh, community outreach. It's about educating all of us, the right. residents, about how we can be proactive. And um, there's been certain workshops on just, you know, how to uh, situational awareness seminars. That was amazing. All yeah. kinds of ways right. that we're trying to communicate that we need to be proactive. Like you said, if you see something, say something, which is really, really helpful. The sheriffs I was talking to, Captain Berenger, who, of course, is going to be retiring. Yes, um, during, unfortunately. Your, we're going to miss him. Yeah. And, and, um, and now Jim McDonald's not going to be there, so we have to get used to a whole bunch of new people. So there's a lot of changing but, of the guards regarding our law enforcement for us right in right. our own community. But we did we did add additional patrols to the right. city of Rancho Palos Verdes a couple of years ago, and that has helped. So we actually are very well covered here, you know. And, and you added patrols effective. into the preserve this, yes, this year, did. right? And that was very important to do yes. that. Yes. So good. So you've, you're, a lot has been done. Moving on to, uh, we know public safety is always the top concern, but also um, managing the books and the money. How are our city finance, finances? Oh. We always hear we're very fiscally sound in Rancho. We Park, are. This is uh, one of the lowest tax cities in the South Bay, and if not the lowest. Uh, our budget, uh, our budget in brief is here. It shows that we have uh, in our general fund, our operating fund, we've got almost thirty-one million dollars that we continue to operate with. Uh, we are fiscally very sound, and if you really care to look at the book, this is the book. It's very thick. Uh, you can actually purchase I one, or you can this. do it online. <laughs> but this little this little detail this is gives an incredible. Us, it is a uh, fabulous. It, I think this is the best publication our city has ever mm -hmm. put out. It's graphs and charts. It's easy to read. Uh, it tells you more activity here on the back. So it's very very helpful. Also, um, we spend less than we take in. Which is pretty, pretty astounding because most cities don't, right. and many cities on the hill are not in as advantageous a position as we are. Uh, we I do know, thank Terranea very greatly because we did get uh, almost six million dollars from TOT tax from them, and we get money from uh, the Trump. Uh, the Trump Organization as well as our property tax. So we get the award every year from the Government Finance Officers Association and it's been for about a decade now that we have been getting this. So it does tell the staff and it tells the community that we are we are minding our P's and Q's and doing our job very well financially. We have, a, we have a significant surplus as well, and we always save for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about unfunded mandates or when they talk about our li unfunded liability fund, uh, there is a portion there, but there, if you really want to delve into it, you can find out why should you float the government alone. Uh, we have the money to pay that off, but we don't. Mm -hmm. But if you want to find more about this too, I always recommend for our residents to go to our city website, and you can read all these details. And, and our city website is the most transparent as well and I think we should deserve we do deserve a, a state award for having such right. a transparent and that's rpvca.gov so go yeah. there so now let's move on to talk about the city infrastructure can you talk about an important project for 2018 right thank you yes the storm drain deficiency improvement project sdtip and the reason that's so important is because this is the first of 10 years of improvements that we need to make to our infrastructure under the ground um, as i mentioned i have all my sewer pipes were replaced this year and they're 60 years old almost so that's the average lifespan of these cast iron pipes well this is happening all around us so this year we replaced um, pipes over in gran via altamira over in um, Western Avenue and in Montemalaga, so um, on Montemalaga Road. So it's really important that people know that this is going to be happening because with the aging infrastructure, you were, we're replacing these corroded pipes with concrete and larger um, vessels, right. larger pipes. One of the biggest issues that comes up, uh, it's been coming up for half a century actually, is the issue with the Portuguese Ben landslide. But this council seemed to finally sort of move forward in trying to address it in, in the past, I think. I mean, right. talk about the efforts that this council and the strides we've taken to try to figure out how to, how to deal with this problem. Well, I, I, we will always go back to one of our city founders, Ken Dida, um, who is on our council again, and he is one of our city founders. Um, this landslide started, of course, in 1957 when they tried to blast through Crenshaw Boulevard and they activated an ancient landslide. So there are three simultaneous landslides, Portuguese Bend being the largest. Finally, we actually sought out um, 
experts in this um, in this field, Stevens and Associates, and they have come in, worked with many workshops together with our subcommittee of Mayor Pro Tem Dehovic and Councilman Dida uh, about addressing this issue. Uh, now we are getting ready to go forward with RFPs uh, addressing how we can address this issue with the least amount of invasion in uh, in that very sensitive area and also with regard to the habitat with the Land Conservancy, which we have a wonderful relationship with. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like you can leave it alone. I mean, it's, land is moving constantly, right? And we know just from the expense to the city with the, the road repair that goes on constantly from that movement. I mean, if some people- It is say, constant. What happens if you just- It's like, almost a million dollars a year. Yeah. So, you know, you can look at how you're gonna spend your million dollars every year for the next 50 years, or you can try to deal with it all now. Another, of course, major uh, conversation the council had this past year was regarding the Civic Center and then right. whether we need one, to build one, um, and you've made progress on that front. Talk about what was accomplished there in terms of moving that forward. Well, we created a Civic Center Advisory Committee uh, a year ago, and uh, there are seven wonderful people on there, and um, Bill Gerstner is the head of that. And he's very talented in his own right, being a former planning commissioner and expert in this field. And we did get help through him from famous architects, Gensler. And they have done a lot of pro bono work for us. We've had several outreaches, workshops with the community about this. This has been, we are 45 years this year, so we didn't even discuss that. But we, we are <laughs> celebrating our 45th anniversary. Yeah. And this is the tail end of that 45th anniversary. And it's about time we have a real city hall. We've been operating out of a World War II Nike missile site uh, for that period of 43 of those 45 years, and it's um, it's high time. And so through outreach from the community, the community is supportive of that. The, the community is supportive, and we need to make sure that we use this in the right priorities. But, as I did point out, it is essential we have emergency services here, because this is the location which, at any given time, particularly on weekends, is the most populated part of the peninsula, with Terranea and the Preserve and Golden Cove. Right. Everything seems to now congeal around this area. And so we are working very hard, either legislatively or through with National Park Service to get this area of land f dedicated to that location mm -hmm. for that site. Talking about the land and what you've been dedicated to is dealing with the coyote problem this oh, year. Oh, gosh. But, um, yes, the coyote was so, with Ara Moranian, our director of, public, of um, uh, planning, um, we really do have a wonderful program and coyote management prep plan. Uh, so he has actually been the one to reach out. We've reached out to all the peninsula cities, and I've worked with the mayors of the other cities as well. Uh, and we go out into the whole South Bay. And so we have this program. We've got a coyote management program now. There is a map on the website. You can see it. We can actually, um, through connections with the county and uh, working with Supervisor Hahn, she was able to budget additional ag personnel w from Department of Weights and Measures to actually come out. We have a full-time dedicated person who comes out at 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., um, Monday through Thursday, I believe it is, to check to see about this uptick in coyote sightings. But the sighting alone is not the indicator that there is a problem. It would be a bold, aggressive coyote, one that is really obviously in your face, will not respond to hazing. We are educating the public, and the public seems very responsive. And I attended a few workshops, which program. have been super helpful, just to educate what you need to do and how you need to make sure you're right. not doing, you're not attracting these animals to our yards because they become so habituated, which is the problem. Uh, and to coyotes. feed them is, in fact, folks, a, a fine. You will be fined. It is a citation because this is what creates a big problem. So we cannot have anybody feeding the coyotes, and you don't leave water out even. And for, the, and it's like, it's important that residents animals. call City Hall or report when they're citing them so we get a better idea of mapping and trapping as well, right? You want right. residents to do that when they we see We do. Them. We want them to keep an eye on this program. The, the City Council is always working to improve quality of life for all of us that live here, and especially in the area of recreation and parks. So talk about some of the things the council is able to achieve in terms of improving parks and rec programs. Obviously, we got the dog park in Eastview. That was nice. We did. We got the dog park in Eastview. There's a lot of things that have gone on. You know, in addition to the parks, we did Lower Hess Park in the beginning of the year. 
So I have a personal passion for that because we've, I've been working with those residents for many years to get that. That actually proves our philosophy, our new philosophy about passive parks. Uh, less is more. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, we do, we did inherit all the parks when our city was, was founded. And so we have 19 parks. We do actually do a lot of activities that are not park oriented. Like we have Whale of a Day at Point Vicente. Vicente. We have the 4th of July. We have Santa coming to town yes. December 8th. We have um, open space management. We have a volunteer program where uh, our volunteers actually go down and clean up the beaches through the coves. Uh, we are blessed with a right, wide range of really special events and great opportunities here. When you mentioned beach cleanup, I'm going to segue to that because in the year 2018, there hasn't been an event, it feels like, in the city that I don't see you at. It's, we're there with our PVTV, including a recent volunteer beach cleanup that uh, we put on. This one happened to be at the Ocean Trails Preserve right, right below Trump. And we had re uh, VIPs from all over the world that were there to help clean up. And you, of course, were there to greet them. But it's that, that was part of the intergovernmental it was um, the State, Department. State Department agency. And uh, we got to meet people from all over the world. Uh, and their purpose there is to see how different communities deal with various aspects of socialization and how you work and live together. And they all worked together and went down to the water and helped clean things up. And it was very nice because it sort of reflected about that they see what we do here in our community and about volunteerism and the, and the role that plays and also the fact that we got to be good stewards and take care of the environment. And they said so they had similar things. But it was really fascinating. Of course, you were right there um, with them. And I think that right, I saw you the, right, that the last month of November, I saw you kicked off the Citizen of the Year Awards. And the funnest thing I think I saw you do was the PV Marathon. You got to start the race. It was, what, 1,700 runners or something in the course? 1,800 runners. Yeah. It and was the lar yes, it was the largest one. But it was amazing. So oh, you, I, you, done I don't know what that footage looks like. I can't wait. But. We're going to be sharing you the footage of her warming up the crowd before they ran. And that, ha and that half marathon... Is historic, you know, has been around for a long time. I was with the Kiwanis 25 years ago. I blew the whistle as mayor in 1993. Cool. And actually, that's when the Kiwanis ran it. Now it's being run by Lexus, but Kiwanis continues to support it. And so I, I am a, with the Kiwanis organization, as is Ken Dida and uh, many other people. Yeah. So we, we work together. I mean, I couldn't list everything for you the did greater good for doing all these things. Is there things that any highlights you want to share, like going down memory lane from oh 2018? Oh my gosh, I you have been mayor of Rancho Ballas for now. This is your third time serving as mayor for our community. I can't thank you. Right, enough. this is the third and <laughs> final time. <laughs> Three the charm, <laughs> and uh, I'm eager to, as I said, pass the baton. We really do have to have people um, step up and and help because it, there is a tremendous satisfaction that you feel from that. But I would say, as a few items. Um, the White House, I did get to go to that White House conference. That was very helpful, and it did give me the opportunity to connect with these key players for the National Park Service regarding our Civic Center site. Um, Memorial Day, I was able to, I get, was asked to give the introduction, uh, welcoming, we welcomed uh, South thousands of individuals as their annual tribute um, to um, those fallen, those mm -hmm. who paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, at Memorial Day at Green Hills. And then uh, I actually had fun with Meet the Goats. Uh, <laughs> I did Meet the Goats both with the Land Conservancy uh, and also over at uh, Point Vicente. Both were fantastic. You, people come from all over because it is a wonderful opportunity. I love that to, event. For families. Um, we had some peninsula-wide, as you pointed out, situational awareness, um, public safety. I, I really love to do things with the whole peninsula. And my goal has always been, uh, if we can't be one city on the hill, um, we can be four distinct communities that share mm -hmm. um, not just this contiguous mass, but we, we work very well together for public safety, for education, for the environment, right. for a variety of issues. I and did. It, I, would, I, would, I had a few more. Fleet Week with the Beach Boys. I did yeah. go with Supervisor Hahn to that one, and I got to meet John Stamos and the Beach Boys at um, the USS Iowa for that. That's. These are like a few little, just you know, sideline things that really are not. Um, they're not necessarily um, duty bound, but they are little adjuncts that do highlight 
there is a Rancho Palos Verdes out here, and it's right over there. And we you keep us connected to the visit. rest of the community. But yeah, the big thing for us, of course, in RPV this year was our 45th anniversary right. celebration. 45 years, and um, the city still feels a lot the same, right? Like since the founders. And well, we have about the same population. We were 43,000 in 1973, and now we're about 44, 45,000. Um, I look at that as being a result of the graying of the peninsula because people brought and raised their children here and uh, many of them left the nest, but a lot of people chose to stay, which is why we have a wonderful senior center. We have a lot going on there. We're looking also at Ladera Linda helping out the new Ladera Linda, the new civic center. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, Ladera Linda is on its way to, um, to RFPs and really to an actual program being built. Finally, with that site has been stagnant for all too long and it's ready in very, very sad shape. So we do have a lot there. But we did have three activities for our 45th. We had, uh, we first of all, pursuant to Ken Dida's wishes, we had the <laughs> actual event on the 40, of the 45th anniversary on, on the, the date day. of incorporation that was a great event. on September 7th. And so we did have that at Point Vicente. Uh, that was a real highlight. Um, it was a wonderful opportunity for residents, leaders, people who serve on our committees, commissions, former mayors, staff to be part of that. Then we had an event for the next two days later at Hess Park for the whole community. And we called it a day at the park. And we decided that it was so nice and it was such a pleasant event that we would like to do more of them on a regular basis. And then finally, we had an event at the, at the College home up um, where the Vanderlip Estate is. And that was for all the elected officials on the peninsula to uh, once again to bring them all together so we, we can share in each other's resources and the wonderment of this little paradise that we have here mm -hmm. in Rancho Palos. That is your word that you describe. It is paradise. And by the way, that you reference all the different events. The, the, what, the event at Hess Park was rocking real literally because it was a 1970s theme. And yeah, that was hard it was, rock. It was, yeah, we, it, was, it, was, it was a great celebration. It was. And, um, it was, and it again, was for you, because you got to oversee the 45th, the 40th, and the 25th anniversary. You're the, the party princess. 20th. 20th. I always give you the 25th. It's the 20th, 1993. Yeah. yeah. Somebody wrote somewhere that I served in the early 2000s. I but your not. first year I you was, were elected to the city council was what year? Was 19. 1991, and prior to that, I was on the planning commission. So I was only two at the time. So talk about that, um, uh, just to encourage residents. I mean, we depend on all the really community yeah. to be to, particip to participate in government, and like it is a volunteer position, and you spend a lot of time. But um, it is, and I think that uh, you know God put us on this earth to um, to for a variety of reasons. Uh, <laughs> And primarily, I think we need to serve the greater good. Uh, the opportunity for us to not just not just make a difference. You got you have to make a difference in a positive way. Uh, so you want to give back to your community. You also want to help to improve your community. We have done so much this year, and we have had such an eventful year that. Uh, there are people who will drive by Rancho Palos Verdes now and say, this does not look like it did um, 45 years ago because the roads are nicer, the uh, environment is prettier, the community is more organized, we have wonderful social groups. I think it's really important for people to know that there are many ways they can step up. They can volunteer, they can serve on a committee or commission, mm -hmm. they can come to uh, any of our activities and offer your services. Uh, but we really do, really do want to see people, you can serve on your homeowners association. That's a great way to start. Mm -hmm. Or form a homeowners association if you don't have one, or a neighborhood watch. One, or a neighborhood watch. watch. Right. We, we're gonna need more of that as time goes on. What do you see as the challenges for the next council? One in, in the December fourth meeting, we have the official changing of the guards, which they right. do the reorganization of the city council. Uh, so um, for the for you, because you'll be on the council as a council member, what will be the next challenge for all of you um, in coming well, in the staff in two thousand? No, that's a good question. We're going to be obviously looking forward for this new civic center, uh, moving forward with the plans for that, moving forward with. Uh, Ladera Linda. Uh, we've got the community has been working very closely with staff on this one as well. Um, it will be a huge undertaking actually. Um, mitigating the fire risk, uh, ongoing, make sure that we keep our brush clear, uh, that we do what we can to get those emergency services when as they're needed. 
um, that we will also work on the Portuguese Bend landslide because mm -hmm. we've got that going out now as well. But these are some major issues. But you know what's really key that we're losing? We're losing local control. We're losing local control because the state keeps taking away our opportunities to decide how we want to zone our communities. And now the federal government is coming in with, uh, with a move to tell us about how they're going to put 5G into, which is the size of a pizza box, onto um, indiscriminate locations. So it's the challenge that we face as elected officials, as volunteers, to try to keep this our local community mm -hmm. that we will face. That's a big challenge. Right. So we'll be paying attention more to that. I'm curious for you, as we have only a few minutes left, and you've done so much for our city, um, what has meant the most to you as serving as mayor this time around for you? I think, the, I think what means the most to me at this point is seeing to having a well-run city that is efficient, that is supported by residents who, um, for the most part, are you know alert and aware. And I think to see that we have progressed, we have a beautiful newsletter, we have beautiful communication devices, and to see that we have a city council here dedicated, where each and every member of the city council, I believe, is dedicated to making, to serving the city. There is no one egotistical individual on this city council where it's all about them. You cannot get anywhere and you are always going to be stumped. So for me personally, I want to see, um, I'm satisfied with our two new members of the city council, Eric Allegria and John Cruikshank. I look, I've hoped that this has been a shepherding mission on my part for them, and I know that next year will continue mm -hmm. before our terms are up. Uh, so my term will be up next year in 2019, along with Jerry Dehovic's, and, and uh, Ken Dida's seat will be up as well. So it will be an election. Yeah, yeah so, so there will be an election. Get people encouraged. And, um, one thing you Three did seats. really encouraging residents, I love that you did Citizen of the Month, and oh, you really acknowledge cool. people that give back so much to the community, and that was really important and special. I wish I had, you know, we had 34 meetings. And um, since I was mayor, so normally you would have 20 or 21. Yeah. And so we had so many meetings because we had so much to do. We had such an ambitious agenda uh, that I only got to do four. So, I mean, there yeah. are others that I would have wanted to do, but um, maybe by they'll the same continue token, that. Who right. Knows, that would be council. wonderful. Well, we're going to wrap so up. So many people give back. Couple, what's going to happen for you for the holidays? Do you have family? Well, I've had family in already, and they came down from Washington State for. For Thanksgiving, we, we made kind of thanks Christmas this year. Um, we actually took a gingerbread turkey, and we did a gingerbread. <laughs> they had these at Trader Joe's. Don't ask me how, but we did that. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to have kind of a low-key holiday, but yeah. I'm looking forward next year to um, um, working less and playing more. That's what you oh, Any New Year's, yeah. do you do New Year's, New Year's resolutions? Or? Yes, to work less and play more, <laughs> as I, I said. Like that. <laughs> that would be my, my New Year's go. resolution. Very good. Well, again, Although I, I know we'll still be working hard. <laughs> yeah, we will be. Uh, thank you so much for city. all you've done. And we know you'll Passionate. be still helping us here at our PVTV. Oh. And, uh, well, God bless you God and bless everybody you. here and all the, all the residents and those who are watching because we really have a very special place here. And in order for us to keep it that way, we need, your, we need you to do your part as well. Yeah. And so you have done an outstanding job here with brought this studio up and brought this program back. And you do ongoing work, which is new and creative with Maria. It's wonderful. Yeah, we have a great team with Carlos and, of and course, Carlos our deputy and city Jeff manager, and Gabby Yap. And Gabriella right Yap is the one all. person who yes. probably knows every job in the city. <laughs> and she so. knows studio operations now, so she's got it all down. So we are very grateful. We have a great, right. great team in the city. We and do. I'm so and thankful, a wonderful city manager. thankful to be part of it. And fun working with you. So we're going to wrap it up. That'll yeah. do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time. Happy holidays.